Here's the proper way to find the horizontal asymptotes of a function by using limits at infinity. The trick to finding horizontal asymptotes is to figure out what happens to the function as x gets big, and we go really far to the right, which is also called determining the end behavior of the function. In fancy math language, this is written as taking the limit of a function as x approaches infinity. If you've never seen or understood limits before, it's okay. All this limit means is plug in infinity for x and see what happens. In this example, we get something pretty messy, which we need to simplify by remembering some rules about infinity. In general, anything involving infinity whether it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, will still be infinity. The one important exception is that dividing a number by infinity will always be zero, as long as it's not infinity divided by infinity, which is undefined. In this case, our limit simplifies to infinity divided by infinity, which is undefined. But whenever a limit is undefined, it usually means we can do more work with algebra tricks to rewrite it in a way that is defined. In the case of rational functions, a good algebra trick is to divide both the top and the bottom by the highest effective power of x, which in this case is x to the third. After simplifying the fractions a bit, we can now take the limit by plugging in infinity for x and see that a lot of these terms will be zero since they are a number divided by infinity. This eventually gives us zero over one, which is just zero. So we can say that this function will approach y equals zero as we go really far to the right, and thus the function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Here's a different example where we'll end up having a non-zero horizontal asymptote. This time, we're just gonna start off with our algebra trick and divide everything by the highest effective power of x, which is x to the fourth and then we're gonna simplify. Now we take the limit at infinity by plugging in infinity for x, and notice that these two far right terms will go to zero since they are our number divided by infinity. This leaves us with three divided by negative six, which simplifies to negative one half. So we can say that this function will approach y equals negative one half as we go really, really far to the right. And thus the function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one half. Now there's one special case you have to look out for when finding horizontal asymptotes, and this occurs when the highest effective power of x on the top is exactly one more than the highest effective power on the bottom. When this happens, we need to do polynomial long division first before taking our limit at infinity. In this example, the highest effective power is two on the top and one on the bottom, which is a difference of one. So we're gonna rewrite this fraction by doing polynomial long division. Doing so gets us what looks like the equation of a line, two x minus four, plus a remainder, 12 divided by x plus two. This remainder can be thought of some error that keeps the function away from touching the line. If we focus just on the remainder, we can see that taking the limit at infinity causes the remainder to go to zero. This creates what we call a slant asymptote because as x gets really big, the remainder starts to disappear and the function looks more and more just like the equation of a line, which in this case is two x minus four. So now we can say that there is a slant asymptote at y equals two x minus four and you're done. Keep in mind that even though the function reduces asymptotically to a slanted line, the end behavior will still be infinite since the line goes up into infinity. Now let's look at the last type of horizontal asymptote. You may be wondering why I keep saying the highest effective power of x. Well, that's because you can't always just look at what's the biggest number in the exponent. Take this function, for example. At first glance, it would seem that the highest effective power of x is eight, since that's the biggest number we see in the exponents. However, there is a square root on the bottom x to the eight, which will end up cutting its effective power to four. This is because square roots are the same as raising a number to the one half. And if we remember our exponent rules, raising a power to a power multiplies the powers together. This means that our new highest effective power is six, which is still more than one greater than the four on the bottom. So we don't need to do polynomial long division, and we're just gonna start by dividing both the top and bottom by x to the six. Quick tip, when putting exponents back in inside square roots, you need to double the exponent. So dividing by x to the six becomes dividing by x to the 12th. Now we can simplify our fractions and take the limit by plugging in infinity for x. Doing so is gonna get rid of a lot of terms because we're just dividing by infinity. So now we're just gonna be left with a three on the top and a zero on the bottom. Technically three divided by zero is undefined since it could be positive or negative infinity. It depends whether the three is being divided by a really small positive number or a really small negative number. But in either case, the function does not approach a real number, and as we go really far to the right, x becomes infinity. So we can say that there are no horizontal asymptotes, and you're done. And there you have it. That's how to find horizontal asymptotes with limits. Nice!